In today's webinar, you will learn how to detect and stop an active attack using the UTM SAC Free Unlimited Edition. You will also learn how to create your own threat detection rules and visualize the results in dashboards and reports without writing a single line of code. Finally, we'll help you understand the competitive advantages of different solutions and when to use them. This threat detection and response exercise simulates an attack from a compromised employee workstation. In this scenario, an external malicious actor has gained access to a corporate device by performing social engineering attack and is now attempting to gain access to corporate systems. The cybercriminal will first perform a reconnaissance attack to gain visibility, then log in into the AD server with saved credentials, modify the host file and create a new user that will masquerade as a Windows Update service account. Finally, the intruder will create an exchange inbox rule to maintain a copy of all new emails received by the compromised employee. UTM Stack will alert you during every phase of the attack and give you multiple chances to stop it. One might argue that SIEM systems are too slow to alert when this activity happens. While this is true for most traditional SIEMs, UTM Stack correlation always happens before costly and slow indexing. Thus, detection times are near real-time and a viable incident response solution. Without further to say, let's get started. Our CEO Ricardo will be guiding you through this exercise. Hey guys, Ricardo here. For this exercise, we are going to be using a pre-installed instance of UTM stack. Don't worry about it, we'll provide you with instructions for doing your own installation at the end of this video. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to be doing is installing Nmap and running a complete network scan. This is going to give us an idea of what are the assets that are accessible by this workstation that has been compromised. So in a few minutes, you're going to be able to see uh, what's available and what services can be accessed. OK, we got it. So there is a Windows 10 virtual machine in which we are currently working. That is the UTM stack demo environment, which you already saw. And then we have an Active Directory server, very interesting. So next step, we're going to try to be accessing this Active Directory server that, by the way, seems to be very vulnerable. So credentials are saved, so that makes our life a little bit easier. So if we go to the UTM stack instance, you will notice that right now UTM stack is showing a few alerts related to the network scan we just executed. When a security operations center sees this, uh, one of the first things they will do is probably open an alert or an incident and execute an incident response command. In this case, you can see more details about the alert that is being uh, shown. And one thing that UTM stack does is even though this scan generated multiple events, all of them were grouped under a single alert. This is a good way to reduce alert fatigue and focus only on the main items and the, and the, and the meaning behind the alert. We are now going to modify the host file. This is a common technique to block detection by security software or to redirect traffic to external services. After the file is modified, UTM stack will show an alert. In this case, it falls into the malware category because one of the IP addresses included into the host file is a blacklisted IP. And you can see the description. Let's mark the alert as in review and proceed with the exercise. So we're now going to create a service account and try to make it look like it's actually a Windows Update Service account.
This is also a common technique used by attackers. They will always try to create a different account into the system. So if their main account gets blocked and disabled, they will still have access. Also, by making it look like a legitimate service account, it's harder to detect. Let's give it administrator permissions. Going back to UTM stack, we'll see how a few alerts appear and this alerts evidence the creation of a new administrator account. For the purpose of this demo, UTM stack has been set to detection mode only, meaning no automated blocking actions are configured and incident response has to be done manually. At this point, the SOC team has been alerted multiple times and there is enough evidence to treat these alerts as an actual incident and start the incident response process. Executing incident response commands manually is very simple. Just go to the incidents menu, select incident response, and select the command you wish to execute. There are two options that come out of the box with the system. Shoot down server or run CMD to execute your own command. For now, Let's shoot down the compromise server. We can later also run custom commands to disable the users that have been compromised and also the administrator account that was created by the malicious user. The system comes with thousands of rules available out of the box. However, there might be instances in which you might want to fine tune them or maybe create your own rules. For that, we use the false positive tagging and YAML declarations. For example, here we are getting a ton of alerts from a network intrusion detection system. Many of these alerts are false positives or maybe alerts that I don't want to see. You can tag alerts as false positives and apply conditionals to evaluate if they are, should be considered a false positive or not. If an alert is marked as a false positive, it won't appear anymore on the alert list. You will still be able to see in the log explorer, but not in the main section for threat management. There are multiple conditionals that can be applied on all the fields related to the alert. Let's enter an observation and apply the status to get the tag up and running. You might also create your own correlation rules from scratch. For example, let's suppose that there is a specific Office 365 event that you want to be considered as an alert. In this case, the creation of a new inbox rule. So for that, let's go into the Log Explorer, filter based on operation, and let's say new inbox rule. Let's click Add Filter and change the dates on the Log Explorer. And we'll be able to see that a few logs already came in for this type of events. So let's create a rule so we're alerted the next time something like this happens. Let's click on Correlation Rules, New Rule, and let's enter the name for the file. For this demo, we're going to use one of the templates available online. The template has multiple components. The first one is the name of the alert. Sever then we have severity, description, the solution, category, ta tactic, and the external resources that might provide additional information and context about this alert. Then we have the frequency, which evaluates how often are we going to evaluate the existence of these fields. And finally, the conditionals we want to apply. 
then we establish the minimum count of occurrences and the time span in which we're going to be evaluating this count. Finally, we define what fields and aliases we want to use to save the information we just evaluated. So let's enter the name of the alert. Uh, let's define the severity as low. Uh, let's put some description. Uh, we're going to be, well, just testing this inbox rule in this webinar. Uh, let's put a solution. So in this case, uh, we can just say, uh, let's review with the user and confirm he actually created this inbox rule and wasn't someone else trying to get a copy of his emails. Uh, category, let's say email collection tactic, uh, let's define it as collection as well. And for references, let's just use the UTM stack documentation for uh, site. Frequency, we're going to leave it in 60 and uh, let's move forward with the conditionals. So for the field, we need to first identify the field we want to evaluate. In this case, it is the lock. 0305 operation. We can look for that field from the left section of the UI by typing the field name, and the system will automatically complete it and search that field for you. By clicking it, you will move it to your clipboard and you can use it on the YAML file composer. The operator, we're going to leave it as equal. And let's enter the value, which in this case is new inbox rule. Then we want to make sure the operation was successful. So the, res the status result of the operation has to be true, successful, or partially successful. Let's leave it uh, with the default values for minimum count and time lapse, and define the fields we want to save into the alert whenever uh, this detection event occurs. So now the next time, a log with these properties comes into a system, UTM stack will automatically create an alert will, that will show in the thread management section. We have now completed the first part of this training. So far, we have seen how to create correlation rules, how to fine tune alerts, how to use thread detection capabilities, and finally execute easy response commands to stop an active attack. In the next video, you're going to learn how to create dashboards and visualizations for the data you have just gathered. You will also learn how to use the Log Explorer to filter and find specific details about events, users, and devices. Finally, you will learn how to install and configure UTM Stack 3 Edition and implement all the functionalities seen in this webinar. Thank you for watching.